quickly mention that we are going to be recording this webinar and also that we will make the recording available to everyone who's attended afterwards. Also, can I just draw your attention to the questions uh, window that you should have on the right-hand side of your screen. Please do feel, feel, feel free to ask any questions as we go, and uh, we will uh, have some time for answering those questions at the end. So let me introduce our panellists for this afternoon. So my name is Ian Woodgate. I'm the Managing Director of UK SharePoint Specialist Point Beyond Limited, and I'm joined by my colleague, one of our managing consultants, Simon Wright. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming on. So our agenda today is, is pretty full. We've got a lot of stuff to cram into the hour. We're going to start off um, by looking at different editions of SharePoint 2013 and some of the ways in which it can be run. We've then picked six kind of key areas to look at, going from business intelligence through to mobile search, sharing enterprise content management and solutions. And then we'll round off by talking a little bit, very briefly, about technical stuff and, and next steps for SharePoint 2013. So we'll crack straight on, so we do have a lot of stuff to cover off this afternoon and, and start talking about SharePoint editions. So those of you who are familiar with 2010 will, will recall that you have three basic versions. There's foundation, there's standard, and there's enterprise. And that, that still plays true for SharePoint 2013. What we do have as well is we've got the online versions, and, and there's obviously a big push from Microsoft with SharePoint Online being part of Office 365. Um, one of the changes between SharePoint Online between 2010 and, and 2013 is actually that the online offerings have become a lot more similar and a lot more closely aligned to the capabilities of the on-premise. And certainly if you look at these tables comparing the different editions, you can see by looking at the right hand uh, two columns in each section, both from premise and online, that they're very, very similar. There's a few differences. However, you do need to remember that if you actually want to customize your SharePoint deployment or you want to integrate it with other line of business applications that perhaps are running on premise, then that may be a lot easier to do with an on-premise SharePoint than with a um, with, with SharePoint running on in SharePoint online. Is it worth saying just now, actually, that all of the demos you're going to see this afternoon are based in Office 365? That's a good point, actually, so Simon, yes. Any functionality you see this afternoon, you'll be able to get in Office 365, assuming that you're on the right plan. Correct. So one of the bigger changes, though, we're going from SharePoint 2010 to 2013 is licensing. And somewhat unusually for Microsoft, they've actually made the licensing simpler going from 2010 to 2013. Uh, there used to be an additional license for fast search, so if you wanted the high-end search platform, the fast search engine in 2010, you had to go out and buy separate licenses for that. That's, uh, that's now gone, and I'll talk a little bit about more about the search functionality uh, later on in the session. The other big change is that you no longer require um, SharePoint for Internet sites licenses to allow people who are external to your organization to access SharePoint. So with 2010, if you had external users, say, accessing an extranet, you either had to go and buy a client access license for every one of those external users, or you had to buy SharePoint for Internet Sites license, which was quite an expensive license. Similarly, if you had um, an Internet site running on SharePoint 2010, you had to license each of those um, SharePoint servers with a for Internet Sites license as well. That's all gone with 2013. And all you require now for your external users is to have the SharePoint server license. So quite a significant licensing change there if you're looking to, to use SharePoint beyond, uh, beyond your organizational boundaries. I think that's a really key one for lots of businesses. And I know there's lots of third-party tools that allow you to publish out various bits of content um, that uh, sort of link with SharePoint. Um, but in the past, you used to have to have a for internet license, and now you don't. I think it's just a huge... It's a huge, a huge change, and it yeah. makes SharePoint much more compelling as a proposition for an extranet or even for an intranet site. So the next thing I want to touch on quickly is the, um, the kind of Microsoft positioning of the two products. So those of you uh, who have looked at SharePoint 2010 in the past will probably be familiar with the famous, or should I say uh, the infamous wheel on the left, where SharePoint was really positioned very much in terms of its, 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 its features and less on its benefits. Um, SharePoint 2013, Microsoft have, have tried to play much more on, on the benefits and what you can do with SharePoint rather on, on, on the features of it. Um, and we have this kind of more simple share, organize, discover, manage and build kind of, uh, kind of marketing message coming from Microsoft. And the colors change as well. Yeah, slightly lighter blue, big, big change there. 
Okay, we're going to go on to the first of our six areas now, and uh, we're going to talk about business intelligence. So, if you, uh, those of you who are familiar with business intelligence in SharePoint 2010, you'll be familiar with this kind of business intelligence center that you have in SharePoint 2010. The BI really has taken a considerable leap forwards in SharePoint 2013, and it's very easy now to create um, really engaging dashboards such as the one you're seeing now. And I know Simon's going to be demoing, demoing business intelligence capabilities in a minute. Yep. So let's just go on now and compare the two editions and the two versions in a little bit more detail. So we can see that most of the features that we had in 2010 have been improved as we move to 2013. So things like Excel services, where we're able to um, render and interact with an Excel spreadsheet through our browser has been improved. Same for Visio services, which allows us to create uh, dynamic data-driven diagrams and drawings, um, again, which can be viewed within our browser. We've got performance point for building dashboards. We've got um, some functionality around Power Pivot that's been improved. So Power Pivot is a powerful way to, to slice and dice cubes of data and, and to allow people to drill down and analyze their data. We've got some, some fairly new functionality around something called Power View, which I know Simon's going to demonstrate in a minute. Power View gives you the ability to, to use tools like Excel or SQL Server reporting services to really quickly assemble really powerful interactive dashboards, again, which can be displayed through SharePoint. And lastly, worth mentioning that um, our, the chart web part is, is actually something that's gone now with SharePoint 2013. It was a very simple web part that allowed you to, to draw charts. That, that is no longer with SharePoint 2013. Oh, I'm sad about that. No, no one ever used it, apart from Simon, I think. So. Yeah, I like that part. So. When a customer asks you, oh, what about the BI? And you've got five minutes left at the end of the day. The chart web part would always get you out of jail free, but no longer. So I'm going to hand over to Simon now for the first of our demos, which is a quick BI demo. Okay, thanks Ian. Um, let's just uh, drag across our BI site. So we've got a standard SharePoint site now with some various BIs across the top. Um, I'm going to start with the Executive Reports uh, tab just here. That's just loading up now. Shouldn't have hit Five, there we go. Okay, so this is the first example is using PowerView, um, which Ian was mentioning uh, a little while ago. Something that you could create in Excel, perhaps give out to a business user that knows Excel and knows their data, reporting on a cube, perhaps of data that's stored in SQL. It then gets rendered in the browser, and this is the, uh, an example of the results. So three little squares here you'll recognize. We've got a pie chart, the obligatory pie chart, the bar chart, and the chart, and the line graph. But we've also got a map-based representation of our data and we'll have a look at that in a moment. First of all, um, I just want to drill down and find out about revenue for computers as a scenario. So I'm going to hover over the little green uh, segment here in the pie chart and I can see that the revenue there is, oh God, what is that, 89 million or billion, I don't know. So let's click on that. And you can see as I click on it, when uh, everyone's screen captures up, what will happen is that it filters all the other charts, which is a really nice thing. It allows me to sort of hover over on this uh, bar chart here and see in a bit more detail which company and which brand and category, uh, how the sales are broken down, which is really nice. If I click here on the uh, Contoso one, a name you'll all recognize if you've ever seen a Microsoft demo, you'll see that it kind of reverse filters and we can actually see the proportion in the, in the pie chart of sales for um, Contoso, for computers. So really nice, very easy, very quick to get to the, to the root of what's going on. And speaking of root, let's have a look at this, these sales dips we had in August, September, October. Uh, you can filter on the fly, and I want to just filter out those. Let's just filter out four months around it and see what's going on. You can see, you can just click on the filters and start to drill into what's going on, and you'll see that it, it's filtering the sales amounts on the top here and the gross margin. So again, another way of getting to find out what's going on within your data. Let me just clear that filter. And the last bit, and by far the coolest, I think, is the map. Um, this is a map showing customer service uh, satisfaction by region. We can see Australia, they're very happy, don't blame them. Um, America, not so. Uh, if I click on here, it will actually filter out my charts, as you, again, as we saw before, so we can see the proportion of sales. If I double click, part of this using Bing, it's going to zoom in and show me the United States, and I can start to see my customer service stuff by uh, area and region. And we can see, for example, that over on the uh, East Coast, Virginia are very happy. I click on there, but very few sales. California seem very unhappy. Click on there, an awful lot of sales. Um, so it's something for 
people to look into there if this data meant anything to you. But I think really powerful, really powerful uh, visualization there using uh, Power View. Very quickly, um, let's click over to the customer satisfaction dashboard. This is something you'll recognize from 2010. So this is using Excel services to render a sheet in the browser. One thing that's new though, and this is new for 13, if I right click on a region, say Australia, and do quick explore, oh, let me reload that. We're on screens, we sat here while we've been waiting to join. Quick explore, we can start to drill down into the different uh, bits of information that make up this chart. So we can start to filter all of this information. So really powerful. That's really nice. And I think worth saying as well that both of these um, demos that you've shown here, Simon, were both done just using Excel. Yep. And this one we're looking at now will work in on an iPad, and we'll see a bit of that later. Last but not by no means least, and again, you'll recognize this from 2010 Visio Services. Um, I only want to show you that because we're going to look at this a little bit when we look at mobile next. Um, I just want to show you this is what it looks like here in the browser, and I'll show you that uh, on the iPad I'm going to be using later, it's pretty much the same. So that's a whistle stop tour of BI. Let me hand you back to Ian. Let's get on with our next section. Lots to cover. Which is mobile. Yep. Thank you very much, Simon. So let's talk about mobile. So mobile in SharePoint 2010, if anyone tried it, it kind of looked like this. And uh, it's pretty hard to imagine how Microsoft could have deprecated any features uh, moving from this kind of starting point. It's true. Um, SharePoint 2010 was clearly behind the mobile curve. Microsoft had put a huge amount of effort into correcting that. And if we look at the capability of, my, of mobile in SharePoint 2013, we'd see it's, it's, it's in another league compared to 2010. And I would say, actually, of all the conversations and people that I'm talking to, probably this is the, the most asked for requirement is around mobile access to SharePoint. So huge area, one that Microsoft invested very seriously and very heavily in. So if we look at the capabilities and the differences between 10 and 13, we can see that um, you could view a basic site in 2010. It wasn't really very usable at all. That's really been corrected now with SharePoint 2013. We've got things like the Office web applications that allow you to view and edit Office documents without having, say, Office installed. Those will work on things like an iPad now. We've got support for device channels, so we can actually send different content that's formatted in a different way to different devices, so that if you're on a small kind of uh, handheld device, then you might see one, one thing, and if you're on a larger tablet, then you might see something different. We've got some nice additions like geo geolocation field, which you can use in mobile app development. Um, some of the BI reports, um, such as the performance point in the Excel services um, that Simon's shown us will work on, on things like iPads. Um, we've been made, there have been improvements made to things like browsing speed. There are apps available for, for iPhone and I think for Android as well for doing things like Newsfeed and also SkyDrive Pro, which gives you an offline, offline um, cache of, of your documents that you're working on. Uh, one thing that won't work, though, that is worth highlighting is, is the, the rather sexy Power, power View uh, dashboards that Simon showed us just now. They, will, they won't actually work on something like an iPad because they do use Silverlight uh, behind the scenes. So I'm going to hand over again to Simon now, who's going to give a, a, another quick talk of mobile capability. Thanks very much, Ian. Um, and while I'm getting this set up, um, I think on the Power View and Silverlight, I think all that really is is a lesson in decide what your audience is going to be. And, uh, and design your reports accordingly. Um, so, oh yeah, I'm presenting on the wrong laptop. Here we go. So I've got a little bit of software called Air Server. I don't know if anyone of you have ever used it. It's fantastic uh, to share my iPad with this presentation. Um, so first of all, Ian mentioned apps, and you'll see on the on the home page here, I've got an app called Newsfeed, which is an app free from the i uh, the uh, Apple I, I store and uh, this is hooking into the live news feed so not a particularly sexy name mod administrator but you know this is this is me logged in and you can see that it shows you information like who I'm following uh, people um, and documents you can see I'm following Anne and Chirag there's Anne you can see her information I actually swipe through and see her uh, activities I can see who she's following I can see who's following her slow down a bit please be sure sure Probably flying through that a bit too quick, um, but lots of information there, all on an app, so you can keep up to date. Now, I think as we, um, I think as we're looking at the social elements, which we'll come on to in a minute, and the sharing, this becomes really powerful because everything's very integrated with SharePoint 13. Clicking through and linking to things, 
much, much easier drilling down and, and actually getting to the root of perhaps a discussion uh, much better than in 2010. And, and I guess this app is a testament to that, and we'll see more of that in the sharing section in a minute. Okay. So let's have a little look at what uh, SharePoint looks like in the browser. So this is a really bog standard site. We're going to come back to this a little bit in a minute for the uh, web content management, but this is a fairly standard SharePoint team site. It's got a bit of content in there. Uh, and you can see it, it renders and it browses uh, exactly as it should do in, in, in the browser on, on a machine, on, on your PC. So an awful lot of work's gone in here as well. Another, another nice thing, and here's the scenario, a bit, a bit around BI and mobile. Perhaps you have the customer service director out in the field on their iPad. Um, and do you remember this from before, our order fulfillment status. Um, and we can see our Visio diagram in the browser um, on my iPad, rendering as it should do. Um, and I can see if there's a problem with shipping. You can see that by the uh, kind of orange uh, symbol there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the order fulfillment status. Let's go into that and find out a bit more information. So this is using Visio Web Access on my iPad, working as it does in the browser. If I highlight shipping, you'll see it's highlighted in, uh, in blue there. Uh, and now if I click on Shape Info, this diagram is linked to, to data in SQL. I can see that my average shipping uh, delivery time is 31 days. So I'm not particularly happy about that. I want to find out what's going on. Here's another new feature for SharePoint 13, comments on Visio diagrams. If I click on comments on the top page, what you should see uh, is that on the right-hand side, uh, we get a comment box that pops up. And we can see that people are already discussing this, which is good because I'm not happy about it. And on the iPad here, I can click in reply. Up comes my, uh, my keyboard. And I can start to put in a comment like, please call me about this. They suck. Someone is in trouble. And that will add my comment. So you can see, working in the browser on an iPad or a Windows phone, uh, pretty much like in the browser. There are some limitations, as we mentioned earlier, around things like Silverlight, but much, much improved and actually really workable. And on the train down to present this today, I was checking all these sites on my iPad, tethered to my iPhone, all working a treat, which was a really nice thing. Ian, I think that's mobile. Great stuff, thank you very much. So the next area that we're going to talk about is search. So this was the search experience in SharePoint 2010, and I'm assuming here this is not fast search, this is the standard SharePoint search. So it wasn't a bad search engine, it worked reasonably well, we had the refiners down the right hand, or down the left hand side of the screen, but search has been another huge investment area for, for, for Microsoft, and if we look at the search in SharePoint 2013, we can really see it's in another league um, to the SharePoint 2010 search. Now a lot of people say that um, the SharePoint 2013 search is the fast search, and, and that's not actually quite correct. What Microsoft has done is they've taken aspects of uh, uh, the fast search, they've taken aspects of the SharePoint 20, uh, 2010 search, and they've actually got a new search engine, which is, which is a kind of combination of both of those search engines um, to build this new kind of search capability. So let's go and look at our comparison table between the two versions. And what we can see is again a lot of improvements. So we've got some nice functionality like um, visual um, visual display of contents as you hover. So if you've got say a, a Word document or PowerPoint presentation, you can hover over that and see a preview of it and check that it's the correct uh, the correct document before you actually open it. Um, we're able to see things like counts, how many times the document has been viewed. We've got um, personalized results pages. So Microsoft will take account of what you've searched on previously. Um, when, uh, when displaying your search results. There's the kind of uh, type ahead, so kind of queries get suggested as you start typing in your search. Search text similar is what you're used, used to if you use something like Google or Bing. Um, it will prioritize our results that you've, you've clicked on previously, so if you regularly look for certain things, it will kind of learn about that and make sure that those, those um, results are shown up at the top. Um, you can also do some, some nice things like follow documents rather than setting, having set up alerts. You can follow people um, straight from your search results as well. And um, the last thing worth mentioning here as well is the continuous crawl. So 
There's a new way of crawling in SharePoint 2013. I won't go into the technical detail of it now. Called continuous crawl. So rather than scheduling regular um, full or incremental crawls, you can have continuous crawl running, and it keeps your content more up to your search index is more up to date. So when new content is added to SharePoint, it's being found much more quickly. So huge growth area. Let's uh, hand back to Simon for a quick demo of search. Thanks, Ian. It's a shame about search, really, because it's so huge. I mean, those of you that have got really in-depth with 10 will know that it, it was big and fast, even bigger, and 13 is just bigger still. I mean, we could do an entire section on search, to be honest, an entire webinar. Do an entire webinar, probably, in any of these uh, six areas. Yeah, no, you're right. Okay, so here we have a search center, very clean, as you'd expect. It doesn't look too dissimilar from 10. Um, I'm going to search for something with the word presentation, particularly broad term. You'll see why in a second. I hit enter and we get to the search results. Just wait for everyone else to catch up. So, as Ian was saying, much richer. Although, you know, the core of it is a list of search results and we have the refiners down the left. We've got some new stuff uh, down the right. So let's say, I mean, this is going to be particularly useful well, for everybody, but I know Sonia, who's on our marketing manager, is going to find this particularly useful trying to dig out the right PowerPoint presentation. So I'm just going to hover over uh, FY 2011 share standing and we see on the right hand side straight away that the um, PowerPoint web apps has opened that up and we can actually start to click through uh, and look at the presentation um, which I think is really useful because I don't know about you guys but whenever I've been trying to look for a presentation one's called pre really important presentation one two three it's really hard to know uh, which is the right one other things that are, uh, that are on this contextual thing as you hover over that I find really useful, one is view library. Now, in 2010, the only way of getting to the library where a document was stored was to copy the hyperlink at the bottom, paste it into another window, take the file extension off the end. I mean, it was just a bit of a headache. Strange now, they become second nature, but finally we have the view library option, which means we can, if we find a really useful document, perhaps there's other documents there, perhaps on a project site, I can skip straight over to the... Uh, to the site, uh, to the library itself, and see all of the related content, which is another Such really a simple path. thing, but really, yeah. really useful. So obvious, but so lacking before. Uh, uh, search for signage down the left. So just to show there's no smoke and mirrors, let's just highlight on Word on the search refiners, and what we'll see is we get some uh, some Word results coming up. And again, there we go. If I hover over the uh, item itself, we see a Word document rendered in in uh, Office Web Apps, and I can scroll through that document. Also here, I can follow. Again, as we see that we look at the social and the sharing bit in a minute, you'll start to see that this is actually usable, whereas for 10, everything was a little disjointed around this kind of alert me. Um, we can send a copy, uh, we can edit it, we can also see when it's last changed and all that kind of stuff. Um, as with lots of the Office 13, we've got sliders wherever there's date information, which is really nice. So I can start to filter out results based on sliders for the modified date. And for those of you who've used Excel 13 and Power Pivot, um, you'll know that those sliders are really useful. People, similarly, and again, I think this is another thing to say, it's much more joined up, uh, SharePoint 13. For people, if I hover over, I see contextual information again. I see their, a little bit of their profile page. I can follow them directly from there. Let's do that. I haven't followed as is. And I also see their recently authored documents. Another really useful way of finding content. Uh, last, and I suppose this is kind of touching on the web content management, but video. So I've got a search scope here for video. As with all of the other documents there, I can uh, hover over the video, and once my browser's caught up, we should be able to show that in playing in the browser. So you can start to scrub through that video and check that that's the one that you're looking for. Maybe a little bit for much sure, webinar to cope with. Pause it and people can see it. Fantastic. So, really holistic. And when we join it up with sharing, I think we'll see that it's actually really powerful. I mean, search will be crawling through all of our social comments, our statuses, our activities, That's our right. hashtags, we'll see in a minute. So, really, search centered really becomes the center. And search, search really is a core service to 2013 as well. Mm -hmm. So, even things like the web analytics are actually being driven off the search now. Yeah. Great stuff. Well, I think okay. that's, that's me for search. Hand you back to Ian. Thank you very much, Simon. So the next area that we're going to talk about is sharing. And, and this obviously is a huge area. So what are we talking about here? 
we're talking obviously about things like collaboration workspaces, which everyone will be familiar with from SharePoint 2010. So the ability to upload and share documents in libraries and to have lists like calendars and announcements and discussions and that kind of thing. And also in SharePoint 2010, we had a kind of very basic social experience, which uh, in my experience wasn't all that widely used. We had things like my sites and user profiles as well. This kind of capability is taken a huge leap forward in SharePoint 2013. Um, if we look at the social kind of capability, it's much more in tune with what people who perhaps use more sophisticated social tools will be used to. Um, and if we look at our comparison table, you can see that um, there have been lots of improvements. I think one of the things that's worth highlighting, though, just generally, and, and we've seen it already, is just how, how much cleaner and faster and easier to use the user interfaces in SharePoint 2013. It's much more intuitive. Things are kind of where you expect them to be, and uh, it, it just seems more, more, more clean and, uh, and easier to use. Looking, looking down at the table in a little bit more detail now, uh, we've got things like discussion boards, which are much more like the kind of discussion boards you, you'd expect to find um, on a decent kind of uh, platform, um, say, say a proper discussion board um, website or something like that rather than the rather simple and clunky um, discussion boards that we had in SharePoint 2010. We've got things now like hashtags, so um, we can use hashtags to easily find and tag things, um, find people that, things that people are talking about across our organization. We know also do um, mentions of people in response to postings that they've made and comments that they've made, and these will show up in your, um, in your feed on your My site. So, as Simon's already mentioned, or any kind of um, up status updates or activities that people are undertaking, that now is going to be searchable, and you can set retention periods as well in, in terms of how long that's going to be available. You can follow hashtags and stay on top of topics that are interest, of interest to yourself. And, and one of the really nice things I like is that, I think Simon will show it in a minute, is the, um, the ability to share content very much more easily mm. than you could in SharePoint 2010. One of the nice things with SharePoint Online, actually, is that you can actually very easily share content with external users, as well as um, sharing content just with people in your organization. Like that is permissions controlled, though, so you have, you have the ability to control who you would or wouldn't want to be able to do that. Uh, a few things have got deprecated as we've moved from 10 to 2013. I'll just highlight a few of those now that are worth mentioning. Uh, the first one is document workspace site template. It's been in the last few versions of SharePoint, I think, uh, not very widely used, and that has now gone. Also, the meeting workspace uh, site templates, um, which did have some quite nice functionality in it, including the ability to do recurring meetings, and you'd show them in the calendar, and each recurring meeting instance would have a click through to a, a meeting workspace. That that has now gone. I think that's. I think quite a lot of customers have, have got meeting uh, functionality built around that, and uh, it's worth saying that it is still there in the background, so that when you upgrade, it, it, your sites are backward compatible, but you're not going to be able to create new sites yeah. without hacking it a bit. Yeah. So it's probably worth moving on. Yeah, Absolutely. Web Analytics, we mentioned uh, the old Web Analytics um, has gone as a separate service. That's now part of Search, but it's, it's more comprehensive in terms of what it delivers. And the last thing worth mentioning that, that's now gone is uh, organizational profiles that you had um, in, similar to my, pro, my pro, uh, user profiles. I, mm. I, I've never really used organization profiles. I've come across anyone. Let's use that piece of time. Well, I think some people have built applications around them. Right. Um, and that's something to bear in mind. Yeah. Basically. So let's hand back to Simon again. Um, and he shall give us a quick demo of some of the new features to do with sharing in 2013. All right. OK. Thanks very much, Ian. Web content management. And again, it's a huge subject. So what sharing. I'm gonna... Are we sharing? Oh, sharing. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Simon's getting ahead of himself here. So excited about web content management. All right. If you insist, sharing. Okay. First example of sharing, you've seen this already. Customer satisfaction dashboard. Um, on the right hand side, I didn't mention this earlier, but this is a site news feed. So it's a news feed relating to a specific site. Really powerful for things like um, project sites, so project discussions and those kind of things. Site specific discussions and news feeds because all of it is searchable. And uh, SharePoint Search is going to do some clever interpolation to base it on, you know, which site it's on and the hashtags and all those kind of things. Speaking of hashtags, we can see in the, in the site news feed that we have some hashtags. Um, Chirag has just launched the customer services dashboard. 
if I click on that hashtag, it's going to take me away and show me all of the content relating to that hashtag, relevant conversations that have used that hashtag. And as we expect, and as Ian was saying, search is very pivotal to, to this, and we can see the contextual uh, conversation. We can actually go to the conversation itself and see the actual conversation and where it was. So hashtags are very powerful. Sharing. So every site will have a share button. Um, don't underestimate it. It was always very difficult to find the content that you were looking for. Interesting. What have I done there? Yeah, right. yeah, great. So it's always been very hard, I think it's fair to say, with earlier releases of SharePoint to find out, for example, who has access to this site. So clicking on a share button tells me that it's shared with 3 and 21 others, so 24 more people. I can click into there and it will show me who it's shared with. And I can add people direct to that site from here as well. Other, sort, uh, other sorts of sharing, I think if we go to the... Um, let's go to another site. I want to show you some of the discussion boards that Ian was talking about earlier. I think really powerful. Um, so here we're on a product ideas and a brainstorm site and down the left hand side you can see a discussion board. This is a really nice template as well actually because there's all sorts of things around contributors and, and badges and that kind of stuff that you'd expect on a proper discussion board. Discussion boards are really good and, yeah. and, and really nice actually. I mean any of you that have had end users asking you for discussion boards, you, you will have been out and looked at third party tools to try and augment them. Um, now perhaps with 13, not so necessary. I leave it to you to decide. So let's just show you hashtags and mentions. So I've just clicked into a specific discussion uh, item. I can see that people are having a discussion around the G10 model. So I'm going to respond to Chirag's post here. And I'm going to say, at Chirag, what you'll see at the bottom is that people I'm following has come up, Chirag and also everyone, and we should Chirag and he's a web marketing manager. And click on that. That's my mention. I'm sure I can see that in his newsfeed on the newsfeed app uh, on his my site. Um, please, can we have it in red? Cash customer services. Perhaps we've done some research that says a G10 model in red will improve our customer services. Uh, and we can use hashtags, and it's going to bring that up as well. And of course, search is going to be capturing all of this and crawling through all of this, and next time someone clicks on the hashtag CSAT, they're going to be able to see this discussion. So again, really powerful, really integrated. What's nice, I think, Ian, I mean, you're, you've talked to lots of customers about social intent. What's yeah. nice about 13 is that none of this information is wasted. It doesn't, it's not just ephemera that's only shared with two or three of your colleagues that you sit next to anymore. It can be used right across the organization is proper business Absolutely. information. And it's, think, it's much more readily shared and available. It's not just sitting in somebody's inbox. No, exactly. So yeah. It's a huge cultural change, of course, to get people to start using these kind of tools, perhaps instead of using email. But if you can manage that and, and do that effectively, then the upside is, is pretty significant. Yeah. And I think there's been lots and lots of companies that have been creating sort of discussion type uh, items or, or sort of news feed type things that you can put on project sites. That perhaps you can do out of the box now. Which is and you don't have to go full hog with this as well, of course. I mean, just to enable a site newsfeed on a on a project site or a yeah. customer site or yeah. something like that can just be such a huge win. And people then you actually you start to use social tools perhaps without even knowing that they're really using social type functionality. Mm, absolutely. Thanks, okay. Ian. So the next area that we're going to talk about is is web content management. So the ability to use SharePoint to, to to create and manage really engaging, really smart looking uh, websites, be that an internal intranet site or a, a public facing website. SharePoint 2010 certainly could do that and it took a, a great leap forward from SharePoint 2007. However, it's another big investment area and the changes when we go to 2013 are really quite significant and it actually becomes a lot easier to start building sites that don't really look so much like SharePoint anymore which is quite a common requirement. So I'll move on now to the table, comparison table, and we can take a look. 
So um, one, of the, one of the immediate things to point out here is that um, the tool set, the actual things that we use to change the way SharePoint looks and feels has changed dramatically from 10 to 13. In, in 2010, your options really were either to you, if you wanted to brand SharePoint extensively, your options really were either to use SharePoint Designer or to use Visual Studio and to actually get a developer in, involved. SharePoint 2013 has taken a very different approach and actually you can use any tool that you want. So if you've got web designers who are happy working with Dreamweaver, then you can use Dreamweaver. If you're a real hardcore techie and you want to use Notepad, you can use, you can use Notepad should wow. you so desire. Yeah. Um, and and what, what you do is you upload your, your page designs into SharePoint 2013 via a new piece of functionality called Design Manager and that enables you to, to actually kind of add the SharePoint functionality into, into your designed and branded site. It's, it's really very nice. So that's the way to go about comprehensive um, branding and changing of the UI in SharePoint 2013. If you want to do some lights branding, which I think Simon will show in a minute, yeah. um, you, you've got some options there as well. So in 2010 you could do some basic light branding, changing colors and uh, di um, images and, and changing fonts perhaps through themes which was, it was reasonable, but it was quite limited. Um, themes have gone, but they've been replaced with a, an improved mechanism that Simon's going to show shortly. Then we've obviously got some, some, some great other changes as well. Some of the key wins that I, I see coming up time and time again are uh, support for HTML5, which makes, um, makes SharePoint much more cross-device and cross-browser compatible. Uh, friendly URLs as well, this was a really huge thing. So for anyone who's who's worked with SharePoint 2010 sites, can be quite frustrating when all of your sites have got things like pages in the URL names. Um, if you open a document, sometimes it's in the subfolder, you can end up with really quite long and quite clunky URLs. That's been massively improved in 2013. I've already mentioned device channels, the ability to target different content to different channels. Um, we've got some very nice web parts for doing things like uh, showing a display of content um, kind of rolling up content, if you like, um, in a new web part called the Content by Search web part, which is a really very powerful web part. So say, for example, you had multiple project sites and you wanted to show all of the project status reports from all of your projects, then um, Content by Search web part is a great way to do, deal with that. And that's cross-site collection? Correct. Because it's using search? Correct. So that can work Where has that been all aligned? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that was a gap that traditionally you'd have to go out and buy a third-party yeah. tool or, or custom code. code. Yeah to get a solution for. We've got some really nice video handling as well. That's been significantly improved, and Simon obviously showed that earlier. One of the things that's really quite clever as well is, is catalogs. So um, you, can, you can define a list in a catalog, and if you want to then start, um, perhaps on the public-facing website where you've got products, and you want to be able to allow people to search for your products by different um, pieces of metadata, and actually kind of have um, search-driven navigation within that as well. Um, there's some really nice functionality for doing that as well. A bit like the sort of thing you see in what John Lewis website, not to yeah. name any brand, particular brand, yeah, yeah, but there yeah. are lots so of very similar sites. Show like me that. all the cameras which are SLR, which yeah, yeah, can take more than 500 pictures and are red. Yeah, absolutely. So, so catalogs and search-driven navigation, those um, those, those tie really nicely together. Um, new functionality, very comprehensive if you want to do that kind of uh, catalog based capability. Um, we've got some improvements in the way that we handle and resize images, uh, which is great when you're designing web pages and perhaps you want to put small images and medium images and large images onto different parts of a page. Uh, support for multi-languages is, is, is improved again from the kind of um, variations functionality that we had in 2010 and we've already mentioned the analytics um, improvements with that now being search driven. So I'm going to hand over to Simon. I think before I do that, though, it's worth mentioning in terms of the the branding. Simon, I believe, is going to show the lights branding, but yeah. the, the more comprehensive design branding around um, using Design Manager, there is actually um, a series of articles on the Point Beyond blog, um, which shows how that, that tool set is used and how that works. So um, I would direct anyone who's interested in that to take a look at our blog, where uh, one, one of our consultants published a, a very nice series of articles. Yeah. So, uh, with that ado, I shall hand over to uh, Simon, who's going to talk, talk through um, web content management. Thanks very much, Ian. I'd like to say that our, that series of blog posts wasn't by me. 
picture. That's a very good series of blog. I think it's four articles taking you step by step through everything. So it's another area where you could do a whole web part. Yeah, a whole uh, webinar on just on just on that really. Absolutely. Okay, so some of you may have remembered this from when we did the mobile bit. It's a very well, kind of unengaging site, a standard SharePoint team site. Um, I'll let my mind uh, run right here where I've created a, an activity center, the sort of thing that you uh, go on stack to use, um, perhaps. And we, what we're going to do is try and make this a little bit more, you know, kind of muddy and shooty and quad bikey. So it's a bit SharePoint at the moment. It's a bit SharePoint. Let's lose it. Okay, so if I click into site settings, first thing you'll notice under look and feel is there are a lot more options. And some of the ones that you'll recognize from what Ian was just talking to you about, design manager, um, device channels, and that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is just look at a really simple change the look. This is a little bit akin to themes that we saw in SharePoint 2010. But I want to show you that it's it's quicker and more flexible, perhaps, than you have Themes on steroids. It is, yeah. All right, so these are some of my themes. I'm going to select orange. Don't know why. Perhaps I think orange is manly. Who knows? Let's not question it. Um, and let's change some of the colors around. Now, this might be difficult for those of you on a slower connection, but let me just click through and change some of the colors. Change the site layout. Um, and what I'm going to show is a little bit of drag and drop as well. So let me just line up my... Just let everyone catch up. Yeah, just watching, watching our little audience view bar just to check that everyone's there. So I've also got some images here in uh, just a standard SharePoint image library, and you can see even this is on steroids. Um, got some really nice functionality here, but I just want to find an image that's going to scream outdoor activity center. I think I've spotted it. It's got to be this abstract background with a huge tire track. So let me just click into that. So we've got our image. Um, all I'm going to do is click and drag over to the left-hand side to add the image as the background on my site. Can you believe it? <laughs> the demo gods are frowning. The demo gremlins. Try again. Yay! There we go. Right, OK. I think I may have dragged a little too slow. OK, so you can see I just clicked and dragged from right to left. Bingo, there's our image. So let's try it out. And while that's whirling away, I'm going to click around here. I want to show you what image renditions are while that's uh, sorting itself out. So this is a view of our standard SharePoint library, image library. And if I uh, go to the uh, contextual menu on this image, I've got an option here to edit renditions. So let me click into edit renditions. And what we'll see is that SharePoint on the fly takes my image and it gives me some options. Start off a 10. Um, see some nice, some nice options there. It's also giving me like a thumbnail, a banner. Um, so let me get back to our site, let's have a look. So it gives me a preview, which is nice. I click Let's Do It, and it's taking me to the site settings again. I'm rushing a little here, because I'm never short of time. So what I want to do is, I want to give us a new uh, logo top left. So what I'm going to do is just drag my URL to this rendition image across to that Insert Logo box. And you can see it's just dropped the URL straight into my Insert logo. Click OK. Click on my site. There's the logo. Look at that. There's my site. It's looking a bit better. Okay. So my resolution isn't helping. There we go. Branding in five minutes. So as you can see, for things like team sites, project sites, perhaps stuff in your organization that you can you want to just sort of make look a little bit corporate, very quick and easy to do. Drag and drop, image renditions. Lots of really powerful features that you've probably seen in other web content management systems. Finally, they're here in SharePoint. Yeah, I think SharePoint 2013 has really grown up as a enterprise class web content management system. Absolutely. Right, let me hand you back to Ian, conscious of the time. Thank you very much, Simon. So the last kind of area that we want to talk about, really, is, um, is solutions. Um, and what do we mean by this? We mean using SharePoint as a platform for building business solutions. So for example, forms and workflows uh, and, and data storage and lists and interconnectivity with other line of business applications. If we look at SharePoint 2010, the options were somewhat limited. Everything was very text-based when it comes to doing things like creating workflows. SharePoint 2013, 
see significant improvements in that. If we go ahead to our comparison slide now and take a look at that, um, we can see some of the significant changes. Now, workflow is worth mentioning first of all. The workflow changes are, are quite significant in that um, SharePoint has now been, the workflow engine in SharePoint has now been replaced with a whole new workflow engine, which is called Workflow Manager, um, which actually can run, has to run a separate server to SharePoint 2013. Um, SharePoint 2010 workflow is still available, but uh, the new Workflow Manager service is, is, uh, is also available should you be using SharePoint 2013 now. Um, and, and it's a much more capable platform, and we'll take a look at that in a minute. There have been some improvements, things like InfoPath, InfoPath Form Services is now much more compliant, which means it works um, much better on mobile devices. We've got support for digital signatures at last in InfoPath. Um, the one thing that's been deprecated is the coding environment in InfoPath is, is no longer. You now need Visual Studio if you want to write code in InfoPath. And Access Services, the, the product that allows you to take an Access database and publish it up to SharePoint has seen some significant changes. And I think it's certainly a technology to watch. Um, one of the big changes with Access Services, when you take an Access database now and publish it to SharePoint, instead of unpacking um, your access tables into SharePoint uh, lists that now unpacks it into SQL Server table uh, tables, so um, gives you a much more scalable, much more kind of open and accessible uh, platform for your applications. So access search is definitely um, an area to watch. I'm conscious of time. I'll hand back to Simon now. Thanks. We'll just give a quick demo of some of the, the solutions capability in 13. Brilliant. I don't want to ask how long I've got. Probably. Yeah, all right, good stuff. Okay, so um, yes, if you're thinking about solutions, it's really got to be forms and workflow. Um, so this is an InfoPath form that I've set up uh, earlier on, and you can see it's fairly standard. We're carrying on my theme of uh, stag do style um, site, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to our existing SharePoint site. So let me drag this across. Now this hasn't changed in 2010, but there are some improvements in um, there are some improvements in InfoPath. Just have to make a little quick change there. Fantastic. Okay. Now your screens may have trouble catching up with this, but allow me just to click through quickly and drop a uh, InfoPath web part on the home page. Nothing new here. You'll have seen this in 2010. Let me rattle through this so that you can see. Stuff. So this is a uh, new changes in InfoPath, things like one-click publishing, which I've been using a lot while setting up this demo, and actually it saves you a lot of time. I thought when I was reading about it when SharePoint first came out, 13 came out. Yeah, yeah well, that's great. great. Actually, it's really useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It proves me wrong, hey? Same for Simon. Okay, so I've added the InfoPath form to the page. Um, you can see it's rendering exactly the same, and it's worth saying again that this renders in the browser and it's, it's AA compliant. Um, second thing to uh, add is workflow, of course, the second part of any solution. So let's have a look at workflow in SharePoint Designer. So this is the site um, open in SharePoint Designer and I'm in the workflow for new booking, which is the workflow that sits behind that booking form. Um, so let me edit that workflow. And what you'll recognize, and probably grown some of you, is a text-based editor uh, for the workflow, which we're kind of all familiar with and not necessarily comfortable with. If I click over to Views here, we get to the Visual Designer. And it starts to become a much prettier place to work. And it's much clearer, actually, what's happening in your workflow. So you can see I've got a, uh, a workflow here for the form, and, and if someone selects shooting, what's going to happen is it's, someone's going to have to collect an indemnity, uh, fill out an indemnity form as part of their booking. A lot to show in a very short time. So. And there's some really nice functionality in there around the additional things that you can do now with 13, like having loops. Yes. You can even do in 2010. Loads of, new, loads of new functions. So let's just complete this form very quickly. Uh, in my address dots on lots of spam emails from everyone later on. Type 
choose here. Let's choose clay pigeon shooting. See, I've done a little bit of maths on this form. It's going to total it up for me. That looks good to me. Pretty lean stag do, isn't it? One lot of clay pigeon shooting. Click submit. It's going to send the data away. What's going to happen is that workflow is going to kick off. So if I look at my current bookings, I should see a new form has been added. Uh, and you can see that the status is new booking. This workflow's kicked off. And another new thing is that this stage here, health and safety check, so the different boxes you can drag on, a bit like Visio when you put backgrounds around different related activities. Uh, this actually will translates into the workflow. Um, five. And click into the back end here. We can see that shooting's being selected and the density form is being created. So it's actually spinning up a SharePoint document, uh, sorry, a Word document in a SharePoint library from a content type. Really powerful stuff. It didn't take you very long to set this up at all. Yeah, it's really slick. That would have been a real typical challenge to do in 2010. It would have been. If I click over to Outlook, what we should have seen is I've received an email with the details of my booking. There it is. Yeah. And a link to the indemnity form to say, you need to fill out this disclaimer form before your booking can proceed. So very simple demonstration, but you know, forms and workflow, I think you could actually build some pretty engaging business solutions now using SharePoint 13 out of the box, which I think is fantastic news. Great. I'll hand you back to Ian. Thank you very much, Simon. You're welcome. Just a few little pieces to um, to round off the session, really, um, that we need to touch on quickly. The first one is the App Store. So this is an, a new piece of functionality for SharePoint 2013. Um, the, the idea is that uh, third-party providers are able to write apps and publish them to a Microsoft public hosted app store so that people with SharePoint can add them to their SharePoint Online instance. Uh, I said SharePoint Online because if, if an app's running in the uh, public app store, most people will be adding that to SharePoint Online. It is possible to add them to on-premise, but it's, it's quite challenging. Um, Alternatively, if you're running on-premise, you can use a similar model and you can actually have your own internal apps available on your own internal app store, which is quite nice. Um, moving on from that, there's a few other things that I feel we should just say we didn't mention, but they were also quite significant areas in SharePoint 2013. The first one is there's been a huge investment in doing uh, e-discovery and legal holds, so the ability to find documents and hold them, so stopping retention policies from being applied. There have been numerous improvements in records and document management, um, not least around um, document life cycles and retention policies. Um, there have been several improvements in business connectivity services, so the services that you use to put SharePoint into your other line of business applications, in particular there's things like support for OData now, which is becoming a, a, a widely used standard. And also there are significant improvements with uh, multi-tenancy, so the ability to have multiple kind of separate virtual instances of SharePoint running uh, for, for different tenants. Um, one of the good things that's worth mentioning there very quickly is the, the ability to have a fully featured search admin page for every single tenant, which is really, really very powerful. A few tech things to, to round up, and I won't spend uh, very long on this. Um, there have been quite a lot of back-end improvements to SharePoint, so the performance has been improved, numerous tweaks to that. Um, the architecture has, has been streamlined, SQL and performance has been improved. One thing that's worth mentioning is shredded storage. So those of you who've worked with 10 or earlier versions will remember that every time you save a new version of a document, it would save a whole new copy of the document. So you have a, like a 10 meg PowerPoint and you change one, you put a full stop at the end of one of your sentences and, that, and save it and that's a new version and you have the 10 megs of your database used up. Um, SharePoint 2013 has got a new technology called shredded storage, so effect, effectively only the, the, um, only the, the differences are stored, so, or the, sh the shred is stored, in fact, so um, dramatically reduces the storage requirements and storage costs for versions of documents. There's also a minimal download strategy, which means that pages load more quickly, and actually bandwidth requirements have been reduced up to about 40% less according to Microsoft bandwidth requirements for SharePoint 2013. So if you're running SharePoint um, across widely distributed sites and your bandwidth is limited, that could be quite significant. We certainly have several customers in that situation. Other, other thing worth mentioning very quickly is customizations. Um, there's a new app model for building customizations, which means your customizations now you have the option to not deploy them to SharePoint, 
the third, preferred approach now is to have them running on separate servers and talking to SharePoint through an API, and that's quite a significant change. Again, it's something we could do a whole webinar on. Yeah. Um, but just just want to make people aware of that. And the last thing is uh, the change to claims authentication, um, from, um, classic mode authentication that we have currently. Um, again, I won't talk about that in detail now, but it's a, it's a significant change. But if you're running classic mode, which most people will be on, on 10, um, 13 is now the default. And enable, in order to enable all of the functionality in 2013, you have to be running claims. So it's worth planning as part of a migration strategy to look at how to move to claims authentication. So, in summary, um, a lot of changes to 2013. I think it's worth thinking about perhaps if you've got customizations, uh, can that, perhaps some of the out of the box functionality in SharePoint 2013 replace custom development or third party tools that may have been used in the past? SharePoint 2013 has really taken a big step forward as a, a business solution platform. Um, and um, I think as well, if people have perhaps held off um, upgrading from um, 27 to 2010, it may be worth revisiting that now, um, because there's not really much point in going to 2010 now. No, and I think a lot of people might have held off going from 7 to 10, just because they had a lot of customizations, and now you're looking at 13, and thinking, hmm, could a lot of these be done out of the box? Them. Yeah, them, yeah. If I do out of the box, is that going to make my support nightmare easier? Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, people... Um, People are maybe wary of 2013 thinking that it's still a new product, but in fact, it's a pretty mature, it's a pretty stable product. It's kind of you know, the fourth version of SharePoint, and um, there's no reason to move from 7 to 10 now. It makes a lot more sense to move straight from 7 to 13. Yep. Finally, quickly going to mention what's next. Um, Point Beyond do offer an upgrade readiness assessment because we found a lot of people are asking us the same questions about SharePoint 2013. Does it make sense for me to upgrade to SharePoint 2013? Um, how should I go about upgrading SharePoint 2013? And if I was to upgrade, um, what would it cost? And, and we've already created this packaged upgrade readiness assessment that seeks to answer those three questions by helping you to define a business case to see whether it's worth upgrading SharePoint 2013, come up with an action plan that will define the steps for achieving a migration, and also come up with an approximate cost to migrate. So if, if that's of interest to anyone attending this today, um, we're very happy to speak about that further. Um, that really concludes for now. I think we're going to move on to some questions. So we're just about in time. Both Simon and myself would like to thank everyone very much for attending this afternoon. Yeah, thank you all very much. So let's have a look at some questions. How do I scroll up? There we go. Oh, we've got quite a few. Good. Okay. How do we move these better? Just make that one. Oh, do you want to drive in? So just bear with me while I uh, arrange the windows. Oh, that's better. Okay, so we've got a first question. Is um, Can you tell me a little bit about the new hardware requirements um, for SharePoint 2013? Okay. Do you want to go? Well, I think we mentioned some earlier already. So um, Workflow Manager needs to run on a separate box. It's very similar to, well, it's an app, isn't it? It's an application server. And, and yeah. SharePoint has gone this way of sort of breaking out servers into different roles. So Workflow Manager and also um, Office Web Apps running on separate servers. And the Office Web Applications, that's a very interesting one to mention, actually. If you want to have the... Um the search previews that Simon demonstrated, and you will need to be running Office Web Applications, uh, Office Web App Server, yeah. and that has to run on a separate box to your SharePoint um, farm. Absolutely. So there's some implications there in your sort of architectural planning as part of migration. Do we want these nice features? Right. Well, that means we need X number of servers. And of course, if you want to load balance that for resilience, then you're going to need two Office Web App Servers. Sure. I think the other thing to mention there as well is, is perhaps the the hardware requirements have ratcheted up as well. Chances yes. are you're going to need um, more, be, yeah, more servers with, with high, mm. higher um, memory, um, higher processor power. Although interestingly, I think SQL 12, I don't think the hardware requirements are much higher for the basic running. I mean, I'm not sure. talking crunching cubes and things, but... A lot depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. It's like with search as well. A lot, 
you know, search for NASA for the impact, the hardware requirements, depending on how much content you want to, to index and how you want to go about indexing that. Absolutely. The next question is, are there any changes in the integration capabilities with the enterprise EDRMS, such as autonomy and Meridio, etc.? Um, I believe not out of the box, no. um, unless there have been some of the improvements in BCS that would, would contribute to that. But I'm not aware of any new connectors or anything like that. No. Sh I mean, yeah, autonomy is it would hooked into SharePoint rather than the other way around. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I know all of the ISVs are frantically making sure their product is 13 ready, well, most, most are. But yeah. Perhaps we could pick that one up offline. Yeah, off I think line. we could pick that one up yeah. offline, David. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Can you slow down on the demo? Yeah, that was a little early. Sorry, I was clicking through a bit fast, so hopefully slowed down for some of you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, conscious of the time. Absolutely. Unless you have any more questions, um, I think we will say to everyone, thank you very much for your time. We hope you found this uh, session useful. It has been a very high-speed talk. Yeah. If anyone would like any more information or to discuss some requirements in more detail, um, please feel free to give us a shout. For the slides to be shared, um, we'll certainly be sharing the uh, um, a video of the of the, deck, of the session. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very useful. Oh, thanks very much. Good. I'm glad you've enjoyed everyone and um, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. See you next time.